Welcome back. Welcome back. You may dominate in here, of course, the Diamond K show on fire dash tv.com radio on fire. A lot to uh, get into, a lot to uh, dissect here today. We talked about this story last week and um, I wanted to dive into it a little bit further. I've had more time to really uh collect my thoughts on this story and really, you know, look at it from all, all sides. So for those that, you know, don't know, there was a Baltimore Department of Public Works uh, employee. How's it going, uh, Tasha? Employee that died last Friday. And he he asked for water, he passed out, and he later died. So there has been this, uh, you know, just a a lot of questions, a lot of uh, unanswered questions. And so there have been calls from the uh, union leaders for reforms, reforms in uh, in the tune of. more that could be done in a week. Let me say that. So this uh, solid waste employee, waste worker, uh, uh, a person that worked for DPW, died while working his sanitation route. I am wonderful. How you doing? Working his sanitation route in Northeast Baltimore. So this is in the Barclay neighborhood. Now, this is from, uh, let me see, our hearts are first and foremost with him, his family and loved ones and his DPW colleagues as we grapple with the loss, said Mayor Brandon Scott and the acting DPW director in a joint statement on WYPR, right? And so you have that. Definitely uh, inbox me on that. Um, and so according to officials, sometimes during the late afternoon, the gentleman's name, Ronald Silver II, he began to experience uh, what they call what they are calling a medical situation. So this medical situation required immediate assistance uh, while he and his co-workers were riding in their truck. So he did not get immediate assistance. And ended up passing away. So definitely a uh, a sad situation here. And so he didn't get the immediate uh, assistance that he needed. Emergency services eventually were called. Uh, Silver was taken to a hospital where he later died. Now, that is the story. That is the presentation that... Uh, the mayor and DPW have for us, right? So let, let me say that again. So according to the uh, the mayor, Brandon Scott, the acting DPW director, uh, Khalil, uh, he wrote uh, in a joint statement that uh, Mr. Silver began experiencing uh, what they call a medical situation. They said that this medical situation required immediate assistance And he and his co-workers were riding in the truck when this happened. Emergency services were called, dispatched, and Silver was taken to a hospital where he then died. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? But uh, witnesses on the scene have provided a different account, right? (laughs) That's not a surprise. Witnesses say something different happened. Um, So uh, Gabriel... Um, a Vin, uh, a Vin, a no, 27 years old, was at home in the 2000 block of Guilford Avenue when uh, she said that he knocked on her door. So just before 4 p.m. on Friday, uh, she said that she had observed some, you know, erratic behavior. This is a mother who's home alone with a, uh, a young child, two years old. Uh, she said that Silver. Uh, fell you know, on the pavement in front of her home, so so the sidewalk in front of her home, and uh, she called nine one one. 
And uh, if you remember, the Baltimore City's Health Department issued a code red uh, last Friday. And uh, they said that the real field temperatures were up 105 degrees. And if you remember last week, it was very hot. It was very hot. Okay. So uh, what is interesting about this is uh, Mr. Silver was alert enough to ask for water. And she gave him water. Then she poured water on him in an attempt to what she says uh, was alleviate his symptoms. She said a few minutes later, he passed out. This is nothing like uh, what the mayor and the acting DPW director said in their statement. The way they gave the, the statement was this happened in the truck. And, you know, uh, the workers called the police and police came that, that or, or emergency uh, paramedics. That's how they said it. Uh, but this uh, witness is giving a completely different account. And I think that, of course, you can't put every little thing in the statement, but this is something significant. I wonder why they didn't put this in their uh, immediate statement. But anyway, uh, uh, she said that she proceeded to lift him up, set him on the stairs where his head tilted backwards and he stopped breathing. Uh, she said that she was instructed to begin chest compressions until emergency services arrived. Uh, so he was given oxygen uh, and additional CPR by members of the fire department of Baltimore. Uh, and they, uh, they uh, took him to Union Memorial Hospital. Now, what's interesting is um, the lady, Avendano, her last name, she said that she was never interviewed by emergency responders nor was any official report taken. So uh, according to this, a lot of balls were dropped. A lot of things happened uh, that should not happen. And so what was interesting, according to a neighbor, was that, and his name is Michael Cox, he's 45 years old. Now, uh, he says that he uh, saw folks, DPW uh, folks talking, uh, on the phone in the truck, uh, they claim to have learned afterwards the coworker was talking to the supervisor, not emergency services. So they assumed um, that they were, you know, talking to, uh, you know, nine one one. And I'm sure that you know you've seen accidents happen, and you see folks on the phone all the time, and you assume that they're calling the police. I don't assume folks are calling the police. I assume that they're talking and gossiping with a friend. So I will ask uh, when I've witnessed situations that require, you know, uh, uh, ambulances and EMTs and those types, I'll say, did somebody call the police? I'll just, you know, say it out. And uh, a lot of times people will say yes. Sometimes people say I'm getting ready to. Sometimes they say they have not yet. I'm talking to somebody else uh, because it's important for you to, to ask that question because you don't know what they, who they're talking to. And this. In this social media age, people are pulling their phones out to start taping stuff. You don't know what's happening. Uh, but uh, these witnesses assumed that the DPW workers were talking with emergency services, but they were talking with the supervisor, I guess, trying to figure out what they should do. And as we pour deeper into this story, uh, initially, um, Vendano says that she hung up the phone because she thought that the matter was being addressed. So there's a lot of assumptions being made. Now, of course, we're not faulting uh, the folks in the community, uh, but I'm just explaining uh, the accounts, and, and there are several. So eventually, the vehicle driver got out of the car and joined them on the sidewalk uh, as uh, uh, the duo were actively administering care. So this is Michael Cox, and this is um, Evandano, uh, whose house the DPW worker uh, they knocked on his door, right? Okay, so uh, this is what Evan Dano says. I guess that the driver had done the last round of trash pickup for Ronald because Ronald couldn't do it. The driver said that he thought that he was just being lazy and didn't want to work. Um, and Cox confirmed hearing the driver say the same thing. So this is uh, this is a different this is a different type of thing, and so. 
Uh, as we continue to dive into this story, according to um, the duo, the driver said that Silver had been complaining of leg and chest pain throughout the entire day. The truck stopped, the truck stopped on Guilford Avenue because they had finished the route. And reportedly, that's where Silver had parked his car. So this was the end of, you know, the end of their work for that day. And um, it is uh, it's interesting that he'd been complaining uh, and he died. When you think that possibly this could have been prevented if someone had called 911 sooner in the day. Of course, we are making speculations and we don't know this for a fact. But let's just say that it is true that the DPW worker was complaining of pains. And his partner said, oh, man, he's just being lazy. He's trying to get out of work. There are people that's like that. But who is he to make this assumption? Who is he to make this assumption? Uh, and, and so uh, that that is said. Now, DPW has offered no additional details when asked about claims that were made. They just say we stand by our statement. It is what it is. <laughs> who are you to challenge DPW? You know what I mean, uh, and so it it is it is interesting. Um, are there adequate and safe working conditions? Do the employees know what to do in the case of emergencies? Uh, why didn't they have water in their truck? <laughs> right, there is a lot of questions uh, that we have, and um, you know, especially the summer that we've been having, the type of heat that we've been having, uh, you would think that swift and immediate action would be taken to prevent things like this from happening. We we get all these alerts from, the, from, from uh, the city. It's cold red, cold this, cold that. And then you have their own employees dying from uh, things. <laughs> this is, uh, this is a, a very sad situation. Now, uh, Mayor Brandon Scott responded to the report's findings uh, by saying that his administration uh, has been proactive in getting water and Gatorade to the workers, while also acknowledging that the sanitation yards, particularly in Cherry Hill, have suffered from decades of neglect under previous administrations. Okay, you know that he's going to say that. Right. He was, hey, 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 yo, I've only I've only been in uh in, in office for four years. You think I can get water and Gatorade in four years? That's not enough time. I need more time <laughs> Four more years. Uh, but uh, that right there uh, is is something that um, is frustrating. It's frustrating because this is what happens all the time. When something happens, they'll say, oh, my God. I did not have enough time. I inherited this from somebody else, you know. And uh, instead of taking this on the chin, because they should have taken this on the chin, right? But blame it out. So this is really uh, a Sheila Dixon's fault or Catherine Pugh or or my girl, <laughs> Stephanie Rollins Blake. It's, it's her fault, right? Maybe it's Jack Young's fault. Jack Young could have, you know, I don't know. I, who's, what do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, they've been suffering from decades of neglect under the previous administrations. So uh, Mayor uh, Scott continues, uh, and um, you know, I, I just I, I don't like this this type of thing, and um, it's something that politicians do. They don't want to take responsibility for the bad things. They will definitely take credit for the good things. They'll definitely take credit for the good things. Now. The uh, deputy director for the Department of Public Works uh, last month, his name is Richard Luna, said that we set aside 20 million that's going to go to our solid waste facilities. And the majority of these facilities that you see in this report are going to have to complete renovations and transformations over the next three plus years. All that is beautiful, wonderful. And they'll throw these numbers out there, the big amounts of money, right? And we don't know where the money goes. It, they're just numbers, bro. It, they're just random numbers, right? 20 million, 10 million, we, fly, 5 million, right? We don't know what happens with this money. It, it just, it sounds good. It sounds good. But when 
you have folks that are dying that work there that maybe they could have got emergency services and, and, and some water hours ago. Uh, these random and extreme amounts of money really uh, just ring hollow. So a uh, lot more to uh, find out. The union that represents most DPW workers uh, confirmed that Silver was a member. And uh, they continue to gather more information uh, on the loss of their union brother. So uh, the union went on to write that whatever steps that have been previously made to keep our members safe is not working. Management needs to be uh, taking the health and safety of the members more seriously. Now, Brandon Scott, of course, thinks that this is not his fault. This is not the fault of his administration. Uh, this is the fault of previous administrations. So that is uh, is something that is very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, and so uh, there is surprisingly currently no federal heat standard that has been set by OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Uh, so for workers to be protected in these high heat situations, there, there's no standard there. So uh, the liability is uh, kind of loose, <laughs> kind of loose. So we're talking about folks that kind of get overlooked because they take out the trash. These folks that are that are in the unions and should be someone that the city cares for does not seem like that is happening. So this heat related death of this Baltimore City Public Works employee Ronald Silver the uh, second has a lot of folks talking. And uh, after this break, we're going to be joined uh, by Pastor Shannon Wright, who has uh, some thoughts on this one. We're going to get get her thoughts on this. And, um, you know, it, it is a serious topic, definitely. So we're coming to the end of the summer, I suppose. Uh, are we are we at the end of the hot weather? Is this the end of the heat heat wave? We've been definitely having a heat wave. I don't know if this is the end, though. Uh, I think that there's a little bit more left. Uh, but we're going to, uh, on the other side of the break, we're going to talk to Pastor Shannon Wright and, uh, you know, get another perspective on the death of this uh, Department of Public Works employee, Ronald Silver II, and moreover, talk about some safety measures that need to be put in place for folks that do this union work uh, here in Baltimore. You listen to the Diamond K Show on fire-tv.com. We'll be back right after this. Visit OnFireTV.com for live top stories, breaking news, and original shows. Welcome back. Welcome back. You man, Diamond K in here, of course, the Diamond K Show. Uh, OnFire-TV.com is where you go. Of course, you can advertise on our shows, uh, social media posting, uh, digital commercials, links to your products, et cetera, et cetera. You can get that information uh, at OnFire-TV.com. You can support the Diamond K Show and what we do here uh, via paypal.me slash radio on fire. 
Of course, on Cash App, it is dollar sign the Diamond K Show. And you can become a member, get exclusive content, as well as supporting our efforts here on fire-tv.com slash join. So on the other side, we're talking about uh, this DPW worker who passed away, uh, heat-related conditions, and uh, city and union leaders are now seeking more protections for Baltimore's DPW workers. I'm going to be joined by uh, Pastor Shannon Wright. Uh, Pastor, are you there? I am here. I am here. How are you doing? I am well, thank you. And how are you? And uh, part two, thank you for having me on tonight. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, when talking about this worker whose life has been tragically lost, and, um, you know, so uh, I've heard you call this death avoidable. Yes. The death of this uh, uh, DPW worker. So w- as far as uh, this situation, uh, w- what are your thoughts on it? So it's interesting to me, regardless of what or regardless to whatever Mayor Scott says, um, someone in the city's employ doing his job is no longer with us. And I do honestly believe it was avoidable. Um, we we talk a lot in the news today about uh, quality of life issues and things of that nature. And we expect those that handle quality of life issues like DPW to do their best for us. And we need to make sure and hold the mayor accountable that he's doing his best by them. So we can all win. This man didn't win. He lost his life. Yeah, that 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 is true. And and so, um, how how can folks hold uh, the the mayor, his administration, and the, the powers that be at DPW? How can they be held accountable? In your opinion, so. In my opinion, um, the way that they're held accountable is, is very simple. Folks have been complaining about the, the work conditions, right? right? And that was denied. And then we had uh, issues where the inspector general was called in and did investigations. So clearly there was an issue that was enough that rose to the standard of having an investigation done. Now, when she says there are issues, there are issues at multiple stations, there are issues with multiple pos- um, uh, multiple policies with regards to the, the conditions that people are working in. And then the city says, oh, no, it's fine. It's not really that bad. And then someone dies not a week later. That's unacceptable. Now, uh, according to Mayor Scott, he says that uh, we are making the investments. uh, And uh, he also says that some of the conditions like at Cherry Hill uh, were long before he was in office. And uh, it's not, you know, it's not his fault. He, He needs more time to get this stuff together. So, okay, when we talk about Mayor Scott, here's the interesting thing. Um, He talks about neglect that he's inherited. But this is a man that's had every job at City Hall except dog catch over the last 10 years, at least. So you're telling me that in your time as a city council person, no, let's go back further, as a clerk, then as a city council person, then as council president, now as mayor, you couldn't figure out how to get some air conditioning and some water for DPW workers? I find that hard to believe. Yeah, uh, it's definitely it's definitely uh, enough time, and, and especially when we have these uh, men and women working under conditions uh, under a code red, which is an extreme heat alert, uh, with the index surpassing uh, 100 degrees. Uh, these are bare minimum things, right? You, you talk about the the millions and millions of dollars that they are going to put on this or put on that. These are the bare minimum things: air conditioning and 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 liquids to drink and uh, just uh, procedures 
if someone is having a medical emergency and, and those type of things? I am I am very disappointed in the the outcome in the way that the city treats its employees and yet expects expects excellence from them. I, I don't even understand that. But they, so you know folks have an issue. <laughs> Ooh, I'm, you know what? I'm going to just be straight to the point. I'm trying to figure out how to be politically correct, but you know what? I can't seem to do that. So you can find 16 point some odd million dollars to lease office space, but you can't find enough money to get a cooler and some water and ice for folks that work in places where the air conditioning isn't working. Right. I find it hard to believe. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is definitely uh, something that is surprising. The medical examiner saying that he died of hyperthermia, uh, meaning that his body overheated. Uh, and this is definitely not something that should be happening. Uh, and so folks have been saying things like there's a toxic culture at DPW and, uh, and things like that. Um, you know, it, where would you start with something like this? If you were if you were the mayor today, where where would you even begin? Begin with making sure that city employees are not working in subhuman conditions. And I think, you know, you apply a little bit of common sense. If we can spend millions of dollars on some frivolous stuff, you got to at least be able to take care of folks you expect to take care of the city. That's number one. Let's make sure that folks aren't working in places where there's no proper air circulation. Let's make sure folks actually have access to toilet paper, which according to the report, there are facilities where people don't even have toilet paper. Come on now. So first thing, make sure folks have the resources to feel human when they go to work. Second thing, make sure folks have the resources to actually be able to do their jobs in a healthy manner. And third, Stop playing games with saying there are no problems when clearly there are issues and problems. We have to, we have, we have become so desensitized in the city. Yeah. We have to get back to a place where we strive for excellence from those that work to help make the city better and those we elect to run the city. There is no way that in this day and age, we should have an inspector general report be the tool that opens folks' eyes to the inhumane conditions that these folks are being forced to work under. That's unacceptable. That comes from leadership. That's Brandon. Yeah, that, that definitely uh, comes from, from leadership, uh, that inspector general report that you're talking about. Uh, noted especially that Cherry Hill uh, Reed Bird Yard workers have been working in heat, uh, in, in in extreme conditions, without the city providing uh, proper cooling, water, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the governor, Wes Moore, uh, said that there's going to be a state investigation into Silver's death. He's going to be holding the DPW uh, accountable. Is this acceptable? Is this a good first step or, or good next step, uh, in your opinion, from the governor? I think it's a necessary next step. I just, again, think it is unfortunate that this is where we are. Mayor Scott, <laughs> in this re-election cycle, has been in so many facilities and so many buildings. You're telling me he didn't know? Personally, that he didn't know? When you're in leadership, you don't keep passing the buck. You take ownership and responsibility. So for me to sit here and believe that he had no idea that things were this bad, one, I don't buy it. Because if that is the case, then he absolutely should not be mayor. Because if you can't if you can't do something as simple as make sure your folks are not working in, in unhealthy conditions, how do we trust that you're going to then lead in a way that's beneficial for the rest of us? No. That's number one. Number two, the fact that once again, Baltimore City is in a position where someone from outside has to come in to help get the house in order is another failure of leadership. And let's look at that for a second. If we have a mayor that is actually in control, has his finger on the pulse of what's going on at his agencies, 
then the governor should not have to launch a statewide or a state investigation into, again, something going, that's going on here in Baltimore City. And I have to say this to the listeners and to the voters. We have to be the ones to decide when enough is enough. Because we can get as upset as we want to get. But when you keep voting the same folk in office, and by same, I don't care if the names are different, the same philosophy coming from the same school of thought, you're going to get more of the same. And now, because of that, someone has lost his life. And we still want to pass the buck? No. No. Unacceptable. All right. So um, you've been talking about uh, the election. Uh, you are running for mayor of Baltimore and um, you are Republican. How can folks uh, find out more about your campaign, support what you're doing, uh, et cetera, et cetera? So um, you can go to our website, which is uh, right. Uh, number four, Maryland uh, dot com. Um, you can find me also on Facebook, uh, Right for Baltimore. You can find me on Twitter, on Instagram, same thing across the board. Folks, listen, there's a couple of things that we have to do to take ownership of what's going on in the city. See, we can't just keep putting this all on Brandon. We have to, one, make sure if we're able to vote that we're registered and do so because our ancestors lost blood, sweat, and tears for us to have the right to do that. So we need to register and we need to vote. And doggone it, everybody needs to do your homework. Whether you vote for me, you vote for Brandon, or you write somebody in, do your homework. Your vote has value. Your vote is your voice. That voice through your vote says more than anything you can write in a social media post. Get registered, do your homework, and vote. We have the power to change the direction the city is going in. Uh, so I assume that you say that the city w is going in the wrong direction. Absolutely it is. Homicides for the first time may be under 300. But let's look at juvenile crime. Let's look at how out of control that is. Let's look at our public schools and how broken they are. Let's look at the, the public and sometimes not so public and sometimes very public feuds between the mayor, the sheriff, the police, the prosecutor. We are absolutely going in the wrong direction. That's not what good leadership looks like. And I understand Brandon says he's a son of the city and has never left the city. Well, maybe he needs to leave the city for a little bit to see what a solution looks like. Because clearly his time at, as a clerk, as a councilman, as council president, and now mayor has not served us well. All right. So, um, again, uh, folks want to learn more about Pastor Shannon Wright. They can visit Wright4, that's the number four, Maryland.com. We got the website up on the screen. Um, anything else you want to say before I let you go? Yes. We have been plagued. Huh. What did Malcolm X say? Hoodwink, bamboozled, Plymouth Rock. We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. We have allowed ourselves to be forced back into the second coming of slavery by folks that look like us. We have the right to demand a quality of life. We have the right to, to demand a better future for our children. We have the basic bare right to demand that in the city where we all live, that we are safe. And we are not having that happen because we continue to elect folks that by their actions show they do not have our best interest at heart. It's time that you value your family, your neighborhood, your community, and use your vote accordingly for your best interest as those you've elected have used your vote for their best interest. Okay. Um, would you be interested in, in a, in a debate with uh, Mayor Scott? Yeah, absolutely. That's something that you wouldn't want to do. No, absolutely. What you do in the dark comes out in the light. Let's bring on the light. Yeah. Yeah, so that 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 is that would be interesting. Um, how uh, ha have your uh, folks had any talks with his uh, with regards to a debate? We've had some talks with with some of the media outlets. Um, you know how when you watch the news and folks say we've asked, you know, Brandon Scott's administration, Mayor Scott's administration, and we have yet to hear back, and we'll let you know when we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, but yeah. I'm gonna tell you this. I am a strong backbone black woman. 
and I ain't going nowhere and I'm not going to be quiet. So he can keep running and ducking and hiding all he wants to, but I'm going to keep making noise because this city deserves somebody to stand up for them. I am a mother. I am a grandmother. I am a wife. I know what it means to have children that you want to make sure go out in the morning and come back in with all the same work and body parts they left with. We need someone that's going to put that kind of an emphasis on turning this city around. We ain't got that right now. When Brandon matures, hopefully he would have that ability to be a great leader. Right now, not so much, and we don't have time to wait. All right. We've been listening to uh, Pastor Shannon Wright. She is running for mayor here in Baltimore. Uh, the website, again, is Wright4. That is the number four, Maryland. Dot com. I really appreciate you talking with me, and uh, definitely we're going to talk again before uh, November. Thank you for having me on. Folks, Absolutely. register, do your homework, and vote. Thanks again, Pastor. Thank you. All right, folks. So that uh, was Pastor Shannon Wright, and uh, we were talking about the DPW worker, talking a little bit about her campaign, and um, I would love to see a uh, a, a debate between uh, these two candidates, uh, her and uh, Mayor uh, Brandon Scott. That would be very interesting. Uh, definitely let me know your thoughts uh, in the comment section, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, at the Diamond K Show. Uh, I definitely want to know. Uh, folks, do you want to see a debate between these two? I mean, I, I, we talked about uh, we want to see a debate uh, between Kamala and Trump. And I definitely want to see a debate between uh, Pastor Shannon Wright and Brandon Scott. Uh, so, you know, it is uh, it, it, there's a lot going on in the city, a lot going on in the country. And uh, we're going to continue to stay on top of these things. Of course, uh, you can always get in touch with me, DJ Diamond K at Gmail dot com and uh, subscribe on YouTube. If you're not already subscribed, uh, DJ Diamond K on YouTube. Contact me for any booking info, djdiamondk at gmail.com. Of course, I will be back here tomorrow, 6 p.m. with uh, more of the show, a lot of other things to get into. But I really wanted to focus on home today and uh, talk about things going on in and around Baltimore. Uh, so with regards to the DPW worker that we have been speaking of, who sadly lost his life. Uh, funeral arrangements are as follows. Uh, viewing is tomorrow, noon to 1 p.m. at uh, Wiley Funeral Home, 701 North Mount Street in Baltimore. The funeral is uh, Friday, 1 p.m. at that same location, Wiley Funeral Home, uh, 701 North Mount Street in Baltimore. The burial uh, will be uh, following at King Memorial Park, 8710 Dogwood Road in Baltimore. All right. So uh, for everyone here at On Fire TV, this is the Diamond K Show. I will see you guys tomorrow.